All right, let's see if this thing fucks up my camera. 75 hits. No problems. 100. 200. I missed that. That was me. I pulled it. There's 200. Don't any of you have that gun to play for blood? I'm your huckleberry. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a brief overview and a first thoughts video for the Keltec RFB. I just recently picked this up and added it to the collection. Um, I wanted to go ahead and start off with why you would buy something like this. For me, I'm at an, a point in my collection where I already have all my bases covered. So what I mean by that is I have my, my pistols covered. I've got solid pistol options. I've got ARs. I've got AKs. I've got shotguns. I've got bolt actions. And eventually you get to a point where you just want something kind of different. And that's where bullpups come in for me. Um, I've always been intrigued by the idea of bullpup rifles, but as a left-handed shooter, again, it's hard to find bullpups that work for lefties. Uh, they do make some options that you can buy in a left-hand configuration, but I also have a family. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have uh, two kids that like shooting. I have my wife. She shoots with me. And while my oldest son is left-handed, my youngest son and my wife are not. They're right-handed. So buying something that is specifically made for left-handed people doesn't really appeal to me and you may find yourself in that same boat that's where the Keltec rfb comes into play for me and i really enjoy it um i have the Keltec rdb already i've had that for several years i'd recently put out a 2000 round review on that and i highly recommend it uh, it had a few little caveats and things that you may need to address if you own one and i don't think this one's going to be much different uh, let's run through some of the specs on it so far uh, just to get things started so it's chambered in 308 Winchester or 762 NATO. It weighs 8.7 pounds unloaded and with no optic. It runs metric FAL patterned magazines in a 20 round configuration. You may be able to get bigger than 20 round mags that, you know, uh, I'm sure you probably can. But for me, I've done some research on these and I know that the thermal 20 rounders are the most recommended from the people that own these rifles as far as reliability and function goes. So I bought a bunch of the thermal mags. They're under 20 bucks. I got mine at Sportsman's Guide. You can get them wherever, you know, magazines are sold. Uh, it does have an 18 and a half inch barrel, which is pretty cool. So one of the benefits of having a bullpup and one of the reasons I like them uh, you get you don't really lose your velocity because you still have that rifle length barrel. So with an 18 and a half inch barrel, you're still going to get probably not maximum velocity out of a 308. You probably get better velocity out of something like a 24 inch barrel. But it, in order to get an AR-10 or something this size, you would have to get like a seven inch barrel on an AR-10 to still maintain that full length of pull and to keep it under 27 inches. You're really looking at probably a seven or eight inch barrel. You don't have that problem with this. This runs an 18 and a half inch barrel and a one and 11 inch twist rate. So you're still getting really good ballistics out of this thing. You're getting high velocity, but you have a very small, compact, uh, transportable package. And to be honest, the weight on it's not bad to be as small as it is. Most of the weight is actually here toward the rear of the, you know, behind the pistol grip. So it actually balances really well. Uh, the optics I'm currently running on this thing, I've got a Banshee 1 to 6 by Monstrum Tactical. Um, I don't know if it'll live on here permanently. Right now, I'm just testing that optic for a future YouTube video for that one specifically. And I wanted to see how will this thing hold up on a 308 semi auto. If it'll hold up to a 308 semi auto, more than likely a 223 is not going to give it any problems. Uh, I do want to say just quickly on the glass. For it to be a $130 optic with the mount included, it's really blown me away so far. I can't speak to longevity or how it'll hold up over time, but glass clarity and just ease of use, the way it tracks when you're zeroing it in, so far that, that Monster Banshee has really impressed me. And I'll say the same about this. <clears throat> um, I've got a little over 200 rounds through it so far, um, about probably 260 rounds. Um, I've got 200 rounds of brass case, 147 and 150 grain ammunition through it. Those have run 100% reliable. I've got about 60 rounds of steel case through it. That has not been 100% reliable. Um, it does have an adjustable gas system. 
And what I have found is that in order to get Steelcase to function at all, and keep in mind as I'm going through this, I'm going to be giving you directions from the shooter's perspective. So if you're on the gun, in order to get Steelcase to run in any type of reliability, you're going to go full counterclockwise. You're going to rotate the gas setting as far counterclockwise as it'll go. And doing that, I've been able to get about 80% reliability out of steel cased ammunition. Um, I have not had that problem with brass case. For brass case, what you'll do is you'll go full clock, full counterclockwise, and then you'll come back clockwise 10 clicks. That's what I'm running my brass on, and it's been running great with the adjustable gas system. It feeds 100%, it functions 100%, and the bolt locks back on every empty magazine at that setting. Um, starting back here toward the rear, it has an AK style magazine release. It's like the paddle style. You're going to hit that magazine comes free. It does have an ambidextrous bolt stop and bolt release, which will give you an idea of how that works. You run the bolt to the rear that drops the bolt forward. Uh, and it is on both sides of the gun. Exactly the same ambidextrous safety. It has a longer throw than I really would like to see. This is an older design. I know on the RDB, kel actually improved that design, and they made it a short throw safety. I like the RDB safety better, but this is completely functional. I have no problem actuating it uh, with the either hand. I'd just like to see a shorter throw on that if they redesign this gun in the future. The trigger on it, truly phenomenal. That's one area kel continues to shine. Um, I, I believe it's rated at 5 pounds on kel website. I don't have a scale, but I do believe it 100%. Um, one thing I said about the RDB in my review of that is that it feels like a mil-spec AR trigger, and I'm, I'm pretty much going to say the same here. So, to give you an idea of what the trigger pull looks like, it's got very little take-up. It's not really mushy, but it is it does have take-up. It gets there to the wall. You can definitely feel the wall. And then, no, oh, take it off safety. So, it has very, even less take-up when it's not on safety. Uh, gets to the wall pretty quickly and then a very clean break Here you can see the reset. I'm going to keep the trigger to the rear It's about an eighth inch to the reset point. Uh, it's not very tactile, but it is audible You can hear it click and then another very light smooth trigger pull with a clean break Charging handle on my rifle is currently set up on the right side because again, I'm left-handed, but it is swappable to swap it, you just knock this pin out the front of the handguard. The handguard hinges down out of the way. You grab it, pull it straight up. The charging handle comes out, flip the gun over, and just insert it exactly the same way on the opposite side. That takes about 10 seconds to do, no problems. Uh, some things I've added to the gun that do not come included from kel -Tec. The pick rail here on the bottom. Um, you have to buy the one from kel -Tec because it's made specifically to fit this handguard. If you don't want to deal with this handguard and you want to add more options as far as light mounts and shit like that, you have two ways you can go about that. One is you can get the Lucky Irishman uh, like M-Lock quad rail for this thing. Um, honestly, it doesn't look like a bad option. I really like the Lucky Irishman handguard and how it looks on this rifle, so that's something I may look into in the future. But for right now, this is working fine for me. Um, but again, it's not going to give you a very easy option to add lights in its current configuration, but you do need that rail if you want to run a vert grip or a bipod. The other option you have is that this threaded portion of the barrel is an accessory mount that kel -Tec designed, <clears throat> and they offer a few different things. They have a quad rail that you can install here. It literally threads onto the barrel, and then it pretty much locks itself in with a set screw. I've never been a big fan of attaching shit to the barrel just for barrel harmonics and whatnot. So I don't really, I'm not really interested in doing that, but they do have a bayonet mount on their website as well. And I just wanted to kind of try it out, you know, take pictures and shit like that. I'm not going to run a bayonet seriously, but I wanted to see how a bayonet would look on it. And just to give you guys an idea, it is uh, set up for M7 and M9 bayonets. This is a cheap ass M9 I got off Sportsman's Guide. I do not recommend this bayonet. It is really shitty, but that's what a bayonet looks like on the front of an RFB if you're interested. All right, moving forward. It has a mil-spec pick rail on top for mounting whatever op optics you want. 
One thing I would recommend with all kel I don't care which one it is, if it has an optics rail that's held on by screws, you're going to want to pull each bolt or screw out one at a time, put red Loctite on them, and then stake them in place. And when I say stake them in place, if you're not sure what that means, what I mean is once you tighten all your bolts down to spec, get a transfer punch, take the transfer punch and press it into the metal on the rail itself, strike it with a hammer, and you're going to deform the metal on the rail, and it, basically the metal will bulge out into the screw head so it stops that screw from being able to back out. That'll stop you from having your rails walk loose on you in the field. You really don't want that to happen because you will completely lose zero and you won't know what the fuck's going on. So don't do that. Um, let's see, sling options. So one thing they do, kel does include a sling with the RFB, but I wasn't really a big fan of it. So I always like to run MS3 Magpul slings. So what I do on most of my rifles is I get this self-adhesive Velcro that sticks to itself. It's one inch wide. And I find something to wrap it on. Back here, they had this spot milled out for the uh, included factory sling. So just wrap your one inch. And then I got some one inch steel D-rings. I've got one on each side. So that gives me an area where I can clip a Magpul MS3 sling clip. And then up here on the front, there's a hole included in the handguard that's for the factory sling mount. But again, I didn't want to use it. So I just made a paracord loop and pushed it through from the inside with some needle nose pliers. And that gives me a good place to clip a MS3 to the front of this gun. Does come included with an A2 birdcage flash hider. Um, I mean, it's a very basic flash hider, but it, it does a good job at hiding flash. Um, adjustable gas system. One thing to note, if you're planning on running a suppressor on this, kel recommends that you swap out the gas piston for the suppressor piston. And I believe, based off what I've read, the reason for that is with the factory piston, even if you open the gas all the way up to send the minimum amount of gas back to the rifle, uh, with a suppressor, it's going to be a shitload of gas, and you're going to beat the hell out of your rifle. So they make a specific piston that you can install for running a suppressor. So if you're going to run a can, get the suppressor-rated piston. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, optic I'm currently running on here is the Monstrum Banshee 1 to 6 Daylight Bright Reticle. Um, I do not know if that's the optic I'll keep on this gun forever. I just wanted to test this actual optic to do a separate video. Uh, so far, though, I've been impressed with that optic. It's very clear glass at the 1 and the 6 power setting. There's like no, no fogging around the edge or it doesn't get that fisheye look. The 1 power is a true 1 power. The Daylight Bright reticle is exactly as they advertise. It is Daylight Bright. And at 6 power, you, you have a, it's still a very clear uh, field of view and uh, sight picture, which I've noticed on a lot of cheaper optics, you don't usually get that. Usually, once you crank up to full power on a cheap optic, it gets really hazy and hard to see. Not seeing that with the Monster Banshee 1 to 6 Daylight Bright. All right, so let's get into how this gun works a little bit. So rifle forward ejecting bullpup, what that means, when you fire a round, your bolt is going to come back, it's going to grab the spent case and pull it out of the chamber. It holds on to that spent case and lifts it up. The bolt continues its path backwards, it picks up a fresh round out of the magazine, and then it returns with both the new round and the spent case in this type of configuration. So as they travel through the gun, when it gets up here, it inserts the fresh mag into the cha the fresh round into the chamber, and the spent case it actually kicks up over the barrel, and there's an ejection chute. I'll show you that here. On the left side of the rifle, that chute that you're seeing there, your spent case travels through that and comes out a hole in the front. That's why it's called a forward ejecting bullpup, and that's how it actually achieves that for true ambidextrous. Uh, ambidextrous I don't know how the fuck you say it that's how it makes it truly ambidextrous um, so again this is just an initial thoughts I've got about 260 rounds through it I'm not really ready to make a full recommendation yet but I wanted to bring it to your guys attention just let you look at it um, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to know please let me know in the comments section below that way when I'm continuing the testing on this I can address those if I need to um, and try to do my best to answer any questions you guys may have if you're, you know, interested in getting something like this. But so far, I like it. I think it's going to be a keeper uh, just based off what I'm seeing with brass. I'm a little disappointed in its uh, reliability with steel cased ammo. 
but that may be something that'll smooth out over time. Hopefully it is. And if not, honestly, steel cased ammo isn't that much cheaper than brass at this point. So I'll probably just keep buying brass. Um, my AR-10 and a couple of my bolt actions seem to run steel case pretty good. So what I have left in steel case, I'll just shoot up through those. But thanks for coming to the channel, guys, checking out this video. Again, if you have any questions or comments, something I could do to improve these videos, please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, take care of yourselves and peace out. Later. These up. I also have a kel RDB, which is the rifle, uh, for, bleh, bullpup rifle. What the fuck is it? Today we're looking at the kel RFB, chambered in 308 or 762 NATO. This is a fully ambidextrous bullpup rifle. Chambered in 308. Um, fucking, I just said that.